Good morning. Okay, do I have any Saved by the Bell fans out there? I mean, there has to be some Saved by the Bell fans out there. Come on, I can't hear you. I know maybe I'm just dating myself of how old I am, but man, Saved by the Bell was what I lived for. I loved it. Now, growing up, a little small thing you probably didn't know about me, I did not grow up with a TV. So I didn't have a crazy opportunity to watch a lot of TV, but somebody who did have a TV was my granny. And so I made sure on every Saturday that I could that I went over there so I would not miss an episode of Save by the Bell. So, cause it was, I mean, that was back in the day. I mean, the show to watch, I mean, Zach's living the dream, all of this stuff, you know? And we just, you could not miss it. There was no way to record it. We just, you just had to be there or you would miss it till the next week. So as we think about Saved by the Bell and all the fun, fun things, I, I try to think about like, what names come to your mind when you think of Saved by the Bell? I know for me, just being honest, it was probably two. It was Slater and it was Zach. Come on, ladies. I mean, come on. Who, who was a Zach fan? Really? Come on. Zach fans out there? Now, who was the MC Slater fan? I mean, the brains, the bronze, the muscle. Come on. I know there are some fans. I was probably more of a Zach fan, but at the same time, it probably just depended on the week I was in of who I was like. The, I'm like, oh man, he's so cute and he's so cute. But I know there are some um, childhood teenage crushes that we all had on Saved by the Bell. I mean, I could go through the whole cast for guys. I'm sure I could list Lisa and Kelly Kapowski and Jesse, you name it. But it kind of reminds us of our teenage years and watching them live out some of the fun things that we experienced as we went through high school. So as I was thinking about speaking this message and we were in the 90s and saved by the bell, one day I was just, you know, working out, doing something and God was like, saved by the bell and Holy Spirit. And I thought, okay, those are two weird random thoughts, God. <laughs> like, how are you gonna connect these for me? And God was like, you know, saved by the bell, the TV show, what it was, was many times Zach was in mischief and, you know, creating all these scenarios and shenanigans and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden the bell rang and he was saved by the bell or something good even was happening. But then it was all of a sudden the bell rang, he had to move on to the next thing. And God's like, you know what? Many times I want to be that to many people in their lives. The warning, the bell, the bell going off, being like, hey, watch out here, this is coming. I'm trying to save you from this. Or like we always hear with the Holy Spirit being like, um, Jiminy Cricket, or this is my conscience. So I want to talk to you and maybe we'll be able to connect the two. And when you hear a bell ring or you think of saved by the bell, you'll remember our fun talk that we had on the Holy Spirit. And this is just a small beginner's like digest on the Holy Spirit. There is so much more, but in the short amount of time that I have with you this morning, I just want to go over with you a few things. First of all, of who is he? Who is the Holy Spirit? Second of all, is how he works in my life, how he works in your life, how he works in our life together, and how we can experience him better. So are you ready to go on this journey? Are you ready to be saved by the bell? I know it's kind of funny, a little cheesy. Just go with me. The 90s were cheesy. Can we just admit? I mean, all the craziness you look back and my kids are like, really, mom, you wore that or you did that? We're like, yes. But let me go on a journey with you, with the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, he is equal with Father God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, it's the Trinity, it's the three in one. And so many times, you know, if we could fully understand and grasp everything about who God is and who Holy Spirit is and who Jesus is, we would be God. So God keeps us in a faith dependence on him. So I want you to think about Father God, um, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, think about an egg. An egg is one, one you know, product, one thing, but it's three parts to it. You have the yolk, you have the egg white and you have the hard shell. So think of that. So it's one product, but it's three different components of that. So today we're gonna focus on the Holy Spirit, but he is equal, the Holy Spirit is equal to Father God and Jesus. 
God sent him into the world so he could be present, so he could bring people to him. He can woo us to him so people would be able to accept. Our hearts would be softened and tenderized to be able to accept Jesus. And last, he comes to live in us as Christians when we ask Jesus to come into our heart. He becomes a part of our life. When we ask Jesus, so if you are a Jesus follower, you identify as, man, I'm a Jesus follower, you have the Holy Spirit living in you. Don't let that scare you. It's nothing too crazy because I'm going to share with you. You're like, well, I don't know. I've never heard, like, I've been around some of my crazy Christian friends and they talk to the Holy Spirit all the time. They hear him. I don't. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You can hear him too. And we're going to take you to the next level because you probably hear him more than what you realize. I want to read a verse of scripture to you just when we talk about who is he and how God said, Jesus said, I have to go away, but send someone to you. So our, um, it's found in John. We're going to turn over to John. It's John 14, verses 16. And it says over here in John 14, verse 16, he says, and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate the advocate is the Holy Spirit who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into truth. And it goes on to say the world cannot receive him because they aren't looking for him and they don't recognize him. So Jesus said, man, I can't stay here on earth, but I'm going to send someone even better. And man, when I read scripture, when I read about all the stuff and the amazing things that Jesus did, I'm like, how does it get any better than Jesus? I mean, he's walking, he's talking, he's healing people. He's like drawing people deeper into their faith. But he's like, hey, I got to go, but I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is with us here as believers. The question I get asked so many times over and over is, how do you hear the Holy Spirit? Or, you know, you hear somebody say, well, I heard God talking to me. You're like, is it an audible voice? Is it this like, Stephanie, today is your day. You know, it's not like that. It's so many different ways that we hear him, experience him, and he knows how to speak to you directly. But many times we just kind of push past and we don't even realize that he's speaking to us. I heard this message once and I want to share with you the four ways that we hear or experience the Holy Spirit that we may not even realize because we're all unique. We're all created differently. So the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us in different ways. And there's four different ways that he speaks to us depending on like what type of personality. And there's probably more, but these four resonated with me and I share this a lot with other people. So I'm hoping this will help you today. First of all is the knower. You know, um, many times when you are going along and all of a sudden you have a thought, a thought drops in your head. Now, if the thought leads you towards selfishness or it leads you toward, you know, something that is not wholesome or not good. Now we know those thoughts aren't coming from him, from the Holy Spirit. But if all of a sudden you have this thought and it leads to joy, it leads to peace, it leads to the goodness of God, you might want to hang on to that thought because that is a knower. A knower many times has thoughts that come into their mind. The Holy Spirit is saying, hey, listen up. I want to speak to you. Just so for instance, um, this past week, I had the opportunity to go to the hospital to pray over someone who was, still is, believing for a miracle for their body. So I'm getting ready to go and, you know, throwing some clothes on. Wasn't even thinking twice about that. All of a sudden, I had a God thought come in. And God was like, have you asked me what to wear today? Well, nope, sorry, I didn't ask you what to wear today. I'm just, you know, well, part of this is get, just getting there, God. I'm getting to the hospital. But God was like, slow down. So I had a thought and I'm like, okay, either that's kind of a crazy thought or this is a God thought. Well, I'm just gonna go with the God thought. So I kind of look in my closet and God was like, the pink jumper, sparkly shoes. And I always joke when I wear that outfit because I call it, you know, my business outfit. I said, I'm going to do some business with Jesus. So I'm like, okay, God, I see you. You just want me to put on my business suit so I can go do some business with Jesus, like declare healing over this girl's body, you know, just we'll, we'll experience you at a new level. So as I'm headed to the hospital and I'm praying and I'm, you know, anticipating, you know, us praying over this girl for healing, God was like, the pink jumper wasn't for you. When you get there, ask her what pink represents 
to her. So I'm like, really God? <laughs> like, so all of these thoughts are coming in and you know they're not from you because I wouldn't randomly think, oh, here, let me ask this girl. Like, what does pink represent? You know, what about these sparkle shoes? Hey, like my tennis shoes. Well, here she's needing a miracle from God. But that are the, those are the thoughts that God deposits into our minds. So as I go into the hospital room, you know, your heart's kind of racing a little bit. That's when you know it's the Holy Spirit because you're like, if this isn't you, Jesus, I'm gonna look a little cray-cray, if you know what I'm saying. I'm gonna be a little cray-cray here, but I'm gonna go out on the limb. And I said, hey girl, I said, does pink represent anything to you? And she's like, uh, <laughs> just kind of looked at me for a minute. I said, well, the reason why I'm asking is God told me to wear this outfit for you and you would know the reason. And she looked and she said, pink has always been my favorite color and jumpers are my favorite thing. And I love sparkle. I was like, God, thank you so much. I said, you cared so much for this person who needed hope today, who needed love today, to see their favorite colored represented, to see a little sparkle, a little shine, because they are in a dark place of needing healing and hope for their life, right now fighting for their very life. You cared enough about that person to have me pause in a moment, hear your voice, to hear a thought come in and be obedient on it. So many times, if you have a little thought like that, just remember, say, Holy Spirit, is this you? And many times it will be him. I promise you, it's really cool in how he works like that. Many times as a knower, your thoughts are gonna be filled with clarity. They're gonna be filled with hope. They're gonna be filled with love and they're not for you. A lot of times they're for someone else. And many times that's where we, the Holy Spirit says as he comes, he's gonna give us a boldness in Acts. He said, it's gonna give you a boldness so you can declare with goodness the gospel of Jesus. So we all of a sudden feel a boldness about us to be able to share hope with someone else. We always like to say, I, one of my favorite things to say is I'm a hope dealer. I love to deal out hope to people because we many times are filled um, with, surrounded with people who are hopeless or we're in situations that are hopeless. And God's like, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. So I want you to be a hope dealer to those around you. So you remember, if you are a Christ follower, you have Jesus living in you you too are a hope dealer. So when you get those thoughts that come in to be like, hey, why don't you encourage that person? Hey, have you ever thought about this in your business to take you to the next level? Hey, have you ever thought about this? Pray on it, think on it, go back to the word, the scripture to make sure, well, yes, God, this is what your word said. A lot of times it'll all line out up and that's how you know those thoughts are not just your thoughts, those thoughts are from the Holy Spirit and he is speaking to you and you didn't even realize it. So one of the first ways is a knower, those thoughts that just drop down. The second one is a seer. I am not, to be honest with you, I am not a crazy like seer. Tim, on the other hand, I mean, he'll wake up and all of a sudden he'll have like a picture. He was sleeping, had a dream and it's like, boom, get up, do this, let's go. And I'm like, God, I want that. Like, that is just amazing to be able to see a picture, to be able to have a dream, to be able to be like, hey, God, like, this is, you know, hey, you know, my child, this is the way you're going to go. And you, as a Christ follower, get the opportunity to be like, okay, God, I'm listening to you. That was a vivid dream. I remember what that dream meant. And many times in the dreams or the pictures that we get, it's significant of what we're supposed to do that day, what we're supposed to do that week for future events coming up. And that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you because he knows that's how you function. If you're futuristic, if you're a visionary and he gives you a picture, he knows you're gonna take that vision, you're gonna run with it and you're gonna do something about it. So that is a seer, somebody who sees a picture, somebody who has dreams. And I encourage you, if you're like, well, man, I've had dreams for a while, but I've never really done anything with them. I encourage you, get a journal, start journaling them out. Sometimes it may have been the pasta we ate the night before. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I have a crazy dream or a show you watched and it's, it has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit speaking to you. But sometimes... Many times, if you are a seer and the Holy Spirit's trying to speak to you and to guide you and direct you, he's going to give you those nuggets. Write them down. And I promise you, as you write them down, he's going to grow that and he's going to be like, hey, 
This is what I want you to do with that. When I showed you a picture of this, that picture resembles this of what's going to happen. So journal it down. You're going to be surprised. Your mind is going to be blown about how much the Holy Spirit is already talking to you and you didn't even realize it. The third thing is this is a hearer. You know, many times people have heard. I have not a lot of times just in my mind, but it's more of thoughts for me. But people will hear a voice saying, go this way, do this thing. Like you'll hear a voice and you'll be like, okay, God, like, am I just imagining, is that my imagination? No, because God knows that when he speaks to you, you're gonna be obedient with what he's given you and told you. And it's never for us. And a lot of times it is to encourage us, to build us up. But when we are built up and we are encouraged and we are filled with hope, what do we become? Well, I talked about earlier, we become hope dealers. And as we walk around, we are spreading the light of Jesus to those around us. So just remember, a hearer, do you hear Sounds funny, hear voices, yeah. If you do hear voices, we've got a great counselor for you, but at the same time, there's a difference between hearing voices and hearing the Holy Spirit. But many times you'll hear that it's a still, small voice. It doesn't come in a lot of times, many like, boom, loud, hey. It's a, hey, hey, listen, I've got something for you. See that homeless person over there with her children? I want you to go over there and love on them. I want you to go give them that $100 bill. Oh God, that's my $100 bill. I worked hard for that. Yeah, but I want you to give it to her. She needs that. And as you'll find, as you hear that voice, and as you walk into obedience, you're gonna get the bigger blessing because God knows if you are here and you hear him and you're obedient with it, he'll give you more blessings, more responsibility, and more, you'll hear more and more of his voice. The last thing, and this is where I resonate so much because many times I didn't understand like how I knew some of the things I did, but the last one is a feeler, a feeler. You're like, what's a feeler? You're like, you are stuck all up in the feels, right? But many times as a feeler, the Holy Spirit has given you a gift. You're a high impact, um, as we talk about, like just in um, nature and conversation, I'm a high impact. You can pick up on people's emotions. Many times the Holy Spirit gives you that because you walk into a room and many times you can see, you can feel, man, somebody in here is a little discouraged, man. It feels a little down, darkened dark and down around here, a little, you know, low. But God has the hope of Jesus inside of you if you're a feeler. All of a sudden, you can either succumb to that darkness or you can be like, wait a second, I'm a hope dealer. I feel the darkness. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start speaking life. I'm going to start speaking about the goodness. I'm going to tell a, I'm going to tell a joke or I'm going to go encourage someone. I'm going to go put my arm around someone and give them a hug, encourage them. Because all of a sudden, I can feel what the person beside me is feeling. All of a sudden, I'm like, wait a second. That's not me. Why am I sudden? You know, why all of a sudden am I feeling sadness? Many times, if I'm around someone or if I feel that, I look and I'm like, "Hey, can I get? How are you?" And many times they'll start crying or they'll be like, "This is happening." Just put my arm around them and be like, "Man, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you so much. I'm here for you. You're not alone." But many times, if you don't realize, that's the Holy Spirit speaking through you. You're like, am I going crazy? Where are all these feelings? I mean, what is happening here? So just remember, if you are high empath and your feelings are like, you can walk into a room and you can sense like the different um, atmospheres. I always talk about being an atmosphere shifter with walking with the Holy Spirit. That is a feeler. And you are feeling the Holy Spirit wants to work through you and move through you so you can encourage someone, so you can maybe equip someone, give them, maybe God's given you a word of knowledge that you need to share with someone. Someone maybe need a hug, just some affirmation that day. Those are different ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. So the four ways, a knower with our thoughts, a seer, you see pictures, you see have dreams, a hearer, Like all of a sudden you hear God's voice and you're like, okay, God, 
I know that's from you. And then a feeler, high impact. You can sense people's emotions. And God has sent you to encourage them, to equip them, to comfort them. And God wants to use you in a mighty way. So you may ask me, the last thing is, you know, this is how he works in our lives. So we talked about who is the Holy Spirit, just general, who is the Holy Spirit? How, how does he work in my life? So I've showed you some different ways that you can hear him working in your life. And last, how can I experience him more? How can we obey him more or experience him more? So I wanna read a couple verses to you. I love this. It says here in um, Galatians 5, 25, it says, since we are living by the spirit, let us follow the spirit. So you're just gonna be starting, so you're gonna start to follow when you hear the thoughts that God thought the God um, voice, when you think the thoughts that are coming from him. And then the thoughts you'll recognize when you start hearing those thoughts from the Holy Spirit of goodness and joy and how to help others, then you'll recognize the lies of the enemy. You're like, wait a second, that's not the voice of my father. The enemy has given me these thoughts to keep me discouraged. So I won't speak out the goodness of him. So it goes both ways. Um, you'll be able to, when you walk into a room, be able to comfort someone. You'll be able to, when you see a picture or have a dream, go into action of what God wants you to do to make that happen. So Isaiah 29, 13 says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you. The Holy Spirit isn't hiding out from us. We're not on a hide and go seek mission to go find him and to be like, okay, where are you? The Holy Spirit is speaking to us. We see him many times in the clouds and in the rainbows in the sky, or we see a mother comforting her child, a brand new baby. We see so many different pictures of him all around us. And he says, if you seek me, you will find me. We have to be seeking him. You know, Tim, Tim taught me this and Pastor Tim. And many times I was like, babe, that is so great. I love that. When you wake up first thing in the morning, say, good morning, Holy Spirit. What adventure do you have for me today? And so since I already prayed that prayer, when I talked back to the, about the pink jumper, all of a sudden God was like, I was ready for you to take an adventure. You just had to make sure you were listening to me, to obey me. So then that girl could be encouraged, tears coming down her face. And I'm like, Remember, God wants to take you back to who you were and to heal you and make you whole. This pink jumper's not about me. It's about the person in front of you. It's about the person in front of me. If you seek me, you will find me. So as we're seeking him, the next thing that we have to do, and sometimes this is the hardest thing for us to do, is to obey the nudge. Obey the nudge. I have said this so many times in community groups that I've led, in different prayer teams that I've led, obey the nudge. When you hear that voice, when you see that picture, when you get that feeling, when you have that God thought, do the nudge, obey the nudge. Saved by the bell, obey the nudge. Hear a bell, obey the nudge. Don't miss out. Obedience always brings blessing. And it's never about you. It's about the other person. And I'm telling you, you can be having the worst day. I've been having the worst day. Nothing's gone my way. It is craziness. Like it's, this is happening. Th that is happening. And all of a sudden, I start hearing the voice of God, that nudge. And then I obey the nudge. Man, my spirit, man, I can feel that hope rising inside of me. I'm still going through a crazy season, but all of a sudden I'm looking, instead of looking just at myself, I get to share the hope of Jesus with others. And then I receive not only a blessing, they receive a blessing as well because we are obeying the nudge. Telling you the Holy Spirit wants you to experience him in levels that you can't even imagine. And he's calling you today to hear him, to see him, to experience him at a whole nother level. But the question is for you, will you obey the nudge? Go ahead and close your eyes and bow your heads. 
We never like to end a gathering without giving people the hope of the good news of Jesus, a chance to ask Jesus into their life. You know, because as we talked about the Holy Spirit, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you can't experience the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit today for you is saying, Will you let me in your life? I want to be a part of you. I want you to experience me at a whole nother level. Jesus came into the world. He was born in a manger, a lowly manger for you. He came to this earth to be born so that way one day he could die on the cross to shed his blood for your sin, for my sin, but it doesn't just end there. God took the punishment of our sins. He knew without him, we're weak and helpless. We need him, we need Jesus. So he said, I'm gonna take the punishment of your sin. Sin entered into the world when Adam and Eve sinned and brought sin into the world. And Jesus said, I'm gonna take their punishment on the cross. I don't want them to die and go to hell and spend an eternity without, them, out without me. I want to live in eternity with them and for them to experience life with me in the present. So he died on the cross for you. He bled on the cross for you. They buried him, but three days later, no wonder they call him the savior, but because he came up out of that grave. We don't serve a God that's in the grave. We serve a risen savior who is alive today and wants to be a part of your life. Will you accept the gift of Jesus today and realize your need for him? Confess that you're a sinner and realize, man, Jesus, I need you. I made a lot of mistakes. I need you now more than ever. God says in scripture that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, he will come into our lives and make us new. We're gonna say a sinner's prayer together. And as we pray this prayer together, some of us have already prayed this prayer, but for some of us, it's the first time we're gonna pray it. You're gonna pray it today for the first time. And we're all praying it together to encourage you because we've made this decision and we know this decision that you're making today is gonna to change your life forever. So as we pray this prayer, I'm gonna say it and then I want you to repeat after me and Jesus is gonna come into your life and make you new. So say this prayer, say, Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I realize I am nothing without you, Jesus. I am asking you today to come into my life and make me new. I need you. I believe you bled and died on the cross for me. And three days later came out of that grave. Today, I put my trust in you. In Jesus name, amen. Man, if today you prayed that prayer for the first time, we wanna celebrate with you. We wanna clap for you. We wanna cheer for you because heaven is already clapping and cheering for you because your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life. Let us celebrate with you. So I'm gonna count to three. Church, are you ready? We're gonna count to three. And as we end with three, we're gonna clap, we're gonna cheer because people have just crossed the line of faith. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. Come on, let's go. Let's clap. I can't hear. Come on. Come on, Pensacola. Come on, Gulf Breeze. Come on, Navarre. People have crossed the line of faith. It is a brand new day. Jesus has made them new. We want to celebrate with you. Well, if you've made this decision, do us a favor. Stop by the Next Steps table before you leave. We have a gift we wanna give you and um, it's gonna help you on your Jesus journey. If you're watching us online, we want you to text Jesus to 1-866-513-1270. Just put in the chat, Jesus. 
Someone will reach out to you. We're gonna send you resources to help you as you follow Jesus. Well, guys, remember, what are we gonna do this week? And for the rest of our days as Jesus followers, we're gonna obey the nudge and listen for the Holy Spirit to speak in our lives. At this time, we're gonna turn it over to the local campuses.